What's up, TIW Mafia? JP here with uh, a shaky Big Joe, and we do have a guest with us tonight, Alan Funk, formerly known as WCW's Kwee Wee, uh, been in the wrestling business for a long time, a uh, veteran, now does his own podcast, uh, the Get Funked podcast, great name. Uh, Alan, how are you tonight? Good, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Welcome. No problem. What made, when did you start your podcast? Uh, shoot, I want to say maybe, uh, you know, I probably should have kept track of that, right? <laughs> uh, I got contacted by a guy named Piers Austin. He does the MWA Podcast Network. Uh, okay. Him and Angel you know, from ECW started that, uh, which uh, Angel was uh, one of the Baldies, the Baldies, one of the ECW originals. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I got to know Angel through over the podcast. So uh, they asked me if I wanted to do a podcast with him. And uh, so I started doing it probably about six months ago or so. Okay. And, uh, you know, so. It's, it's been something, you know, it's, it's been a work in progress and, you know, it's, it's, I think it's getting pretty good. I've had some good guests on and uh, I've had some good positive feedback. I don't know if you guys got to catch any of them shows yet. No. And I just saw you got Elix Skipper coming up or did you just have Elix on? Yeah, I had him a couple weeks ago. I mean, I had Chuck Palumbo. I had uh, ECW yeah. or uh, uh, CW from ECW uh, Tuesday oh. night. That was live. Nice. That's uh, a good one, actually. That's... And you probably remember this old name, uh, the Ice Train from Fire and Ice. Yes. Scott Norton. Yes. I had him on a couple weeks ago. Uh, I mean, I, I've had, you know, Chuck Plumbo, Mark Jendrak, Mike Sanders, a lot of the Natural Born Thrillers guys you, yep. you know, probably watched back in the day. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on uh, C.T. Fletcher, which is he's a like an icon in the fitness industry. Uh, he's got 2.2 million followers on Instagram, so that should be a big show for me. Yeah, that's uh, cool. That's what you, you know, and that's really because, you know, I, I'm guessing you're about our age. Um, I'm guessing I, I all turned 50 in July. All right. I'm 47. Joe's about 50 as well. So, like, this isn't our fucking thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. this isn't like our generation's thing. So it's like if we, we try to do the same thing and you try to get like an influencer on maybe from a different genre, or from a different um, like you know, bodybuilding and wrestling sort of go hand in hand, especially your generation of wrestling, which I loved. Yeah, I um, used to bodybuild back in Ohio back in the day. So, yeah, that's you guys had to back then. Yeah, you, you had to have good up. bodies back in the day in wrestling. You know, none of this, you know, 180 pound, 160 yeah, pound guys. There's nothing against them either because, like, some of them are great wrestlers. I just can't get behind it. I'm 400 pounds, I'm not in shape, I'm 6'8. Yeah. If I don't believe you can kick my ass, I don't want to <laughs> see you beat someone else up. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? And well, not that I'm the biggest you... guy either, but I at least always took pride in my body and always, right. you know, I wasn't the tallest guy, so I had to have a better body to go with it, you know? Yeah, that, and that's the thing. And But you guys also sort of um, had to be able to back it up, too. Well, yeah, back in the day, you know, I, I was tested a few times back in the locker room. So, you know, if you, if, 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 you know, nowadays I don't, I'm not really sure how the locker rooms are because I hadn't been around too much in the locker rooms, but uh, I couldn't imagine some of the stuff that we did back in the locker room back in the day being acceptable today. <laughs> no, not at all. It's a shame. You know, yeah. Talking about like uh, Rick Steiner tried to try me once, you know, and so I had to stand up to him, which, you know, w w which was turned out pretty good because, you know, there was there was a probably a chance that I was going to get my ass whooped, but I didn't back down from him. So him and I are pretty good friends to this day, just because I didn't That's back down from him. Right, like a pack of wolves. You had a you had a pack. Yeah, man. Hold it up. You, oh, you might not be the top wolf, but as long, even if you get your ass kicked, as long as you don't back down, you're still accepted. You know what I mean? Yeah, Joe, go. Joe, we joke all the time because growing up, Joe was the one who bullied me. He was like the oldest <laughs> of my friends. That's a true story. Hey, I'm Joe, you big bully. <laughs> so, but, I was, but like now we're best friends. We're brothers at this point, you know. I was picked on with except when we got the JP's crowd on him. Can you interpret that for me? <laughs> I, I, I I heard bits and pieces. In my crowd, I was the one picked on. Oh, okay. Oh. The JP's crowd, him. Right. So, and Joe Joe was the one picked on in his crowd. So when he could get a hold of someone from my crowd. <laughs> He picked Game on, on, right? I happen to be the slowest <laughs> one in my crowd. I got you. So, so everybody else could outrun you. So you don't want to get picked on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was the one. <laughs> well, but you know, was... back back in the day, I was always a small guy. I graduated high school, believe it or not, one hundred and five pounds. 
but uh, I probably grew about seven inches a year after I graduated high school, so I was a late bloomer. Now, what came first, body for you, bodybuilding or pro wrestling? Yeah, yeah, bodybuilding. I figured I needed to get a better body before I got into pro wrestling because, to me, like like you said, I, I don't I don't knock anybody. You know, you, the wrestling you, you need all shapes and sizes. You know, you need your Dusty Rhodes, you need your King Kong Bundys, you, you know, you need your Hulk Hogan, you need your Big Papa Pumps. You know, it's a mixture yeah. of everybody. But and Lori Prescott Demore, what's up? That ain't Scott Demore's wife, is it? It is not. Uh, Laurie is a <laughs> local fan here, actually, her and her husband, Bobby D. That would be awesome. something else. Yeah, right. Thanks for joining us, Lori. Appreciate it. Uh, so, you know, I, I was, you know, I'm 5'9", five 5'10". Five so, you know, and people that met me back in the day when I, you know, I, I mean, I'm still in pretty good shape, you know, for a 50-year-old man. Uh, but they always say, well, I thought you were taller than that. But they they always said, man, your body's great, you know, but I always thought you were taller than that, so. You know, here, here in your body's good. And I just had a, you know, who Johnny Swinger is, right? Yes. So I just did an autograph sign with Johnny Swinger and a few, you know, uh, the Steiner brothers and uh, Craig Pittman, guys like that, the old WCW guys. Yes. Uh, and uh, Teddy Long was there. It was his deal. Uh, Johnny Swing, you know, we got all the banners in the back where your old pictures are on it, right? Kind of like behind me here. Yeah. Uh, I got my old Queewee picture on it. And Johnny Swinger came up to me and said, man, he said, Alan, by far, you are definitely – the only guy here that looks better than your poster. So that kind of makes you feel good. You know what <laughs> I mean? That's cool. Now, can I ask about your last name? Yeah, Funk. It's my real, it's a shit that's name. Your, I, yeah, that's your real last name. Yeah, Is funny, there... funny story. When I met Terry Funk, he had to see my ID. He didn't believe my no. last name was Funk. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was going to ask, one, is there any relation? And two, did you sort of, because you worked as Alan Funk for a little while, did you take any yeah. kind of heat for that? No, no heat at all, man, because my shoot name. It's not like I just went in there and said, right. hey, I want to be Alan Funk because I want to be, you know, I want Terry Funk to take note of me or something. You know, it's my shoot name. And, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 not that it ever worked out that way, which would have been awesome. You know, I, I've wrestled Terry before and I've done some spots with him in WCW. But uh, 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 my, my father used to come to the show. My father had passed away over the last few years. But when I was wrestling at WCW, he's coming to a lot of the shows. So uh, in Indiana, there we we uh, found out that uh, we had mutual family in maybe some parts of Indiana, Chicago, uh, and then Terry, we we go to Indiana for a pay per view. My dad comes to the show. Uh, when I when I get there, well before my dad got there, I'm in the back with Terry, and his uncle walks in. He's like, "Hey, I'd like to introduce you to my uncle." And I looked at his uncle, and I I was like, "Holy shit!" His uncle looked like my dad's identical twin. Really? So I said, I cannot wait till my dad gets here. This is ridiculous. They look like identical twins. So my dad got there. I went out and got him. You know, I gave him his pass from Arn Anderson. We go. I said, Dad, you got to meet Terry's uncle. I said, you will not believe it. And I said, I'm not going to say nothing else to you. You just got to come in here and meet this guy. So we went to the locker room and I, I walk in there and Terry and his uncle stand up and I'm like, Terry is my you know my father. And I think you met my father one other time. And uh, so then I said, Hey, Dad, this is this is his uncle. <laughs> And I and he looked and he looked at me and I went, I said, Yeah, you you guys look like you're looking in the mirror. You feel weird. And he's like, Holy shit. So, you know, my dad and Terry always sat down and tried to figure out how we were related. Never really known, but you know, we, we had fat we had uh you know, people from back in the day, both of our families come over here from Germany around the same time. So okay, you know, I'm not saying there's a connection, but there's a connection. Yeah, the you know, it sounds like there probably is, and that's when families came over Funk's an unusual split. name so you know what I mean yeah that, that, I had to google you to see if that was your real last name because I wasn't sure and when I saw that I was like is it not Terry's and I had to look up Terry to make sure it was his real last name yeah like, well like, you know uh, once we finish the show I'll show you my ID if you don't believe me oh no 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 I, don't, <laughs> I, I trust you well, That's, um, but I, that, that was like the first thing because I mean you know how wrestling can be Oh yeah, no doubt. You like know. you know, a lot of guys I'm sure probably think I just use that name just to try to get some recognition. Now, how did you feel when you went to um when you went to WCW and they they kind of pitched the idea of Kiwi to you? Did you? Well, you, you know, I, I was excited because you know I've been working my ass off getting to where I was, and uh, finally, uh, well, you know, I. <laughs> I was excited knowing that they were going to want to do something with me, but I was also a little bit disappointed because me and Mike Sanders were doing a gimmick. Uh, we were called the double A team. If yes. you guys remember that at all. So we were doing that a lot on Saturday nights. And I thought really 
I thought that was going to take off because me and Mike, it was a pretty good deal and everybody seemed to like it. And I was really comfortable doing that because I kind of, the Angry Island character is something I'm comfortable with. So uh, when they, they approached me with the Kiwi, I was like, well, you know, it's better than nothing. You know, if it's my only option, it's, you know, it's, I'm going to have to go that route, you know? So I was excited for it because, you know, I worked hard to get to where I was and I didn't certainly didn't want to get off TV. And I, you know, I wanted to right. stay where I was. What was funny about that too, if I remember right, they brought both of you guys up to nitro at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Just, pretty much, pretty much out. all the guys from the power plant, which was, uh, you had all the natural born thrillers. You had Reno, Chuck Palumbo, Mark Jindrak, Sean O'Hare, Stasiak, uh, you know, Elix Skipper, all of us pretty much come up the main card at the same time. That's, that's, that's an impressive That's a good class, class right there. Yeah, oh, it's that's... unbelievable the talent that was in that. Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. Apply today to become a, a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's Podgo at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. And be sure to add the Irish whip in the how did you hear about Podgo section of the application. Yeah, Now, you wanted to talk about the power plant for a little bit. Sure. So I, I got uh, right. me and Dale Torberg and uh, Glacier, which is Ray Lloyd, uh, yes. and, and uh, Reno and uh, maybe Chuck Palumbo. They might have contacted him. Well, there's a, there's an anonymous committee that wanted to start a WCW Power Plant Hall of Fame. Uh, I have no idea who's on this committee. All I know is ever since I started my podcast and started talking about this, it's got all of us old friends back together and guys that we used to wrestle with in WCW has brought more camaraderie. And we, you know, we, now I've gotten yeah. in touch with guys I haven't talked to in a while. So it's been a positive thing. Uh, they, we've already announced two classes, uh, the inaugural class of 2021. Uh, first we had the trainers, which was Sarge, Paul Orndorff, Jody Hamilton, which was the assassin Pez Watley. And then uh, Mike Winter was a trainer there. So they, they first announced the five trainers and then, uh, off the top of my head, I'm sorry, I don't have the list right in front of me, but they uh, they had a class with the uh, ice train was on the class, uh, Robbie and Kenny from uh, High Voltage, yeah. uh, and a few other guys. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember the names, but yeah. uh, then the next, the last class we just got was, uh, let me try to get this straight, Dale Torberg with Asia, because she was in the power plant. <laughs> you remember Asia? <laughs> I forgot all about Asia. Oh, uh, she was incredible, wow. man. Uh, then you she had, seemed like uh, she was really good. And she was oh, she, the perfect answer to what WWE was doing at the time, and the name was a perfect answer to what they were doing at the time. Yeah, yeah, but they just didn't use her right, and, you know, she kind of just, uh, you know, they got lost in the shovel, and then once, you know, the whole crap started with WWE coming in there and everything, yeah. and, you know, a lot of us got overlooked, and, you know, then the rest is history, you know. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, you had, the, oh, uh, uh, Chad Fortune, uh, Sick Boy, uh, Lodi, yes. they're all in yeah. that other class. So uh, they're they're going to announce uh, t- ten more guys next month. So uh, I'm I'm crossing. Oh, Elix Skipper, he actually nominated me. So I'm hoping I get picked for the next round. Nice. Yeah, I script room for you. Now, so. is there an actual like ceremony for it? Well, I, I was trying to do it on my podcast, and I mean, you guys probably will understand what I'm saying here. When you're trying to get <laughs> people on your podcast, especially wrestlers. It's so hard to get all of them together, or it's so hard to get even one. And a lot of these wrestlers, yeah. to be honest with you, not, not making fun of them, but they're not too internet savvy. Right. And, uh, you know, you have trouble getting them on. I had Sarge on my podcast. I, I, I did a great interview with Sarge. So I wanted to get him on again to do the power plant, you know, rev, you know, tell him that he got inducted to the power plant Hall of Fame. He couldn't get on a computer. I kept Day after day, we're trying. And it just got to the point where I was like, Shh, I can't do it. So I did well, ice, ice Train was the last one I did. So uh, you know, I, I'm gonna start having more and more. And Goldberg was on the list, and I'm gonna hopefully I get I'm gonna get Goldberg on my podcast because he owes me a favor for that spear I did for him. So <laughs> <laughs> now was Goldberg a Goldberg was a power plant guy? Yeah, he trained with Sar mostly Sarge down there, but you know, a lot of us uh a lot of us were kind of guinea pigs for him. Okay. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you guys were doing the jackhammer, doing the spear, doing, you know, yeah. stuff that he did. And, you know, Bill, Bill is a good athletic guy and he was great oh. to train with, uh, you know, but he, he's, he's a little different to work with than, than, than to hang out with. 
Yeah, I'm sure. He, um, I, you know, I love, I thought the streak was great. Like I got behind the streak, you know, when I was watching WCW back in the day and yeah. I thought what he was doing, you, you, they managed to have him do stuff like it was basically spare jackhammer, spare jackhammer. Like they, yeah, you yeah. Know, they, was, I mean, they used him how he should have been used at the time because yeah. he, he wasn't great in the ring at the, when he first started, right. but they, they, they did enough with him and they, they made him look strong and he was a big dude. And, you know, they, for all intents and purposes, they did it, they did it pretty much the right way for all for what they were working with. Right. And guys like you making them look, you know, making it look like he's kicking your ass. Well, yeah, and, the and, match and I had with him wasn't been. too long. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, yeah, he was a little stiff, over. that's for sure. As much as he's over, he needs somebody else to put them over. No. Oh, definitely. I mean, everybody needs a good opponent to make him look good, man. There's right. no doubt about it. Now you were definitely yeah. like the heyday of WCW. Was there somebody was there somebody there that you didn't get the chance to wrestle that you wished you had or well I mean there were several guys, dude. I, I would have loved to work with Benoit when he was there, but I never got a chance to. Uh but Benoit and my father were pretty good friends when he came to visit all the time. Him and Chris would sit there and drink coffee and hang out. And uh, you know, I, I would have loved to work uh let's see, Benoit. Uh I would have loved to work Jericho when I was in WWE. Uh, Jericho would be like one of my dream matches. Uh, and Chris was always a great guy, treated me good. And, you know, I, I always like hanging out with Chris whenever I saw him, he always treated me good. So I, I would have loved to work with him. Game. Oh, he dude, he's incredible, music. man. It, everything that guy does, man, he just keeps reinventing himself. And Chris is, he's a good dude to begin with. Uh, and you know, it, he's just a great guy, man. And there, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm glad he's doing so good. And he, he's just a good dude, man. Yeah, that's. It's good to see because people, you know, people will say, oh, what about this one? You know, like they did it with Hogan 20 years ago. Hogan's so old. Hogan's so old. Well, Jericho's that same age. He's just a little more, he's still a little more capable, I think, you know? Yeah, yeah. Jericho just turned 50. Uh, he's the same age as me, but, you know, he's been in wrestling for in, right at 31 years now, I think. From everything I've heard, he is just an awesome guy. Like, I've. I had the oh, opportunity. Dude, you, you can't get any better than Chris. I, I had the opportunity to meet. I like his music. Yeah, yeah, Fozzie's Fozzie's really good, actually. Yeah, yeah, Rich Ward, which is actually his head guitarist, was actually engaged to Daphne, or they might have even got married. Oh, really? Uh, and, and that's how I first met Rich. He uh, he he come to a couple of shows with Daphne. She brought him around, and then we got to meet him and stuff. And then he was in a band called Stuck Mojo that they were they played in Atlanta a lot. Of, uh, I think it was called okay. the Tabernacle. And uh, so we had, we used to go, me and Dale Torberg, uh, uh, Reno, Rick Cornell, we'd go, uh, and a couple other, Chuck Palumbo, I think maybe, we'd go watch him at the Tabernacle, and that's how we got to know Rich. And he's a great guy, too. I had the opportunity a couple of years ago to meet Perry Satin at uh, um, a thing here that I was helping out with. And um, Perry was here not just for the, the convention, but he was here actually to get his head looked at by a couple of doctors, and uh, Chris actually paid for his flight. Oh, did he? So like a yeah, kind of like, like a uh, protocol for like concussion type thing, or exactly? It was. It was. Um, he got diagnosed actually with post concussion syndrome. He's one of the few that actually got diagnosed while he's still alive. And I think I know he, he wasn't doing too good there, man. I talked to Sonny Ono about him, uh, and uh, him and Sonny used to be, Sonny used to be good buddies, and uh, he kind of just. He, like fell off the face of the earth, bro. Yeah, he had to. He ran into a lot of issues. Um, he's doing a hundred times better now. Um, I don't know if you remember the referee Paul Richards. Mm, Paul um, Richards. Paul did a little. He did the Northeast for WWF, and he did ECW. Yeah, I, I, um, I think I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Paul got diagnosed. Paul saw these doctors here, um, part of the. Um, Chris Nowinski's foundation here. Okay. Legacy. And they, yes. And now, they is that the same thing Daphne was talking about on her deal before she killed herself? Probably, she, yeah. I think she said she was going to have her, uh, or she had to go to, Bo or they had to go to Boston. That's why she. More than likely. And okay. Paul, like Paul, could, you couldn't know the conversation with Paul at one point. And Paul, they, they helped him out and they got him to the point where now he's trying to help other people like Perry out. That's good. That's and, good. Um, Perry, I saw Perry a year after that first time I met him, and it was a hundred times different. So that's funny. You bring up, I got a little story about me and Perry Saturn back in the day. If you want to hear it, sure, must we do. 
so uh, we're in Cleveland, Ohio, which is, I'm from Ohio. So it was uh, right down the road from where I grew up. So, you know, I had all my family and stuff there. But uh, so Perry, from what I understand, his wife, ex-wife and his kids lived in Cleveland. So and this was the first time that I would have met Perry had I introduced myself to him. But I didn't. And I got big heat for it. But I, but I'll explain myself. So we're, we're at the arena all day long at the CSU Convocation Center. Uh, so I, I got, you know, I'm going around making sure, you know, we're young guys. We just come up from the power plant. So we're, you know, we learned all the etiquette. We're trying to introduce ourselves to everybody so we don't get no heat. Well, so I was going to go introduce myself to Perry Saturn. And I think I was with Elix Skipper. And I told him, I said, you know, somebody said, you know, uh, Perry's with his kids and his ex-wife. You don't get to see him very much. So he's over talking to him. And I said, well, shit. I said, I want to bug him right now. I said, I'll go over there and, you know, introduce him in the, in the locker room or whatever. And I saw him a couple of times that day and I, I, he was with his kids and his wife. So I didn't want to mess with him, you know, out of respect for him. I didn't want to bother yeah. him. And uh, so boy, was I wrong. That got me so much heat with him. So fast forward to a couple of weeks later, we're at the uh, Phillips arena in Atlanta. So, you know, we, I, we both live in Atlanta. So we're there at the arena. We're sitting there uh, catering with, uh, I think Glacier was sitting there, Ray Lloyd, I think Goldberg might even been sitting there. And then a couple guys from the power plant and uh, a couple guys I'm sure I'm missing. Uh, And uh, he uh, looks up at me. We're all talking. He looks up at me and goes, yeah, like you, you fucking punk. And I look and I'm like, excuse me. And he's like, yeah, like you, you fucking punk. You can't, you're too good to fucking introduce yourself to everybody. And I'm like, fuck are you talking about? He's like, oh, last, you know, last week, you know, fucking didn't you, you too good to say fucking hi to me, introduce yourself, you fucking punk. Like, and I stood up, I said, fuck you, Saturn. I said, you can kiss my fucking ass. I said, you won't, you know why I didn't fucking say anything to you? Because out of respect for you, I didn't want to fucking bother you with your kids and your wife because I heard you didn't get to see him too often. And if you don't like that answer, fuck you, stand up, we're fucking fighting. And he didn't say fucking shit. He sat down and said, uh, I guess this kid fucking means business. I, I guess I can't fuck with him. So we, uh, <laughs> he just sat down and said, calm down, man. Calm down. I'm just fucking ribbing you. And uh, I said, well, you know, I said, if you got a problem, let's fucking talk about it. Uh, and I, after I explained myself, I think he kind of felt like an asshole because he realized that he was with his wife and kids. And, you know, I didn't want to bother him. And that was the fucking right. truth. And uh, so then him and I became pretty good buddies after that. We, I see him in the gym all the time. And, you know, we talked to each other all the time after that. So, Actually, it was kind of a good thing. I probably did that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, and it's like you said, you can't, like you addressed it. You didn't say I wasn't wrong. You explained why you did what you did. And yeah. You did. Well, you know, back in the day, that was a you. thing to do. Nowadays, you can't do that shit because you'd probably get fired. Yeah. Yeah, you know? it, yeah it's, it, it's a different, it is a different world. And I don't know what the corporate wrestling locker rooms are like. <laughs> I can tell you in the independence, like it's sort of split. Like there's the guys who read comic books in one corner and there's the guys who are going to drink beers in the other corner. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. And it's always been like that. You've had a mixture of guys. And, and, you know, you get like, like I said, now I think some of the, like some of these smaller kids are great workers. I just don't believe they can beat me up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Great workers, man. I mean, some of these guys are unbelievable. Do you, do you watch product now? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I have a hard time watching it. I'll watch some of the pay-per-views. Uh, yeah. I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning earlier, so it's kind of hard for me to stay up and watch a show past 8 o'clock. You know what I mean? Yeah. and that's... Uh, But I will say this. I, I'm not a big fan of what WWE is doing right now with anything. Yeah. Uh, other, other than, like, I love watching Charlotte Flair and the women wrestle. And, uh, yes. you know, not that I'm a pervert, but I just think – the women just oh. perform a lot better than the men right now, and I'd rather watch the women wrestle. One hundred percent, Charlotte, Sasha, um, right down to the newer girls. They're yeah. all they're all unbelievable. This era of women's wrestling is by far the best era ever of women's wrestling, and it is every bit as good, if not better, than what the men are doing right now. Oh, they I agree. From being eye candy to actual workers, and yeah, oh and yeah. Some of them, there's yeah, still he, some beautiful women in there. Oh, yeah. You know, like Britt Baker. You got that Kayla Ross yeah. and AEW. Uh, you know, those, I like watching those two guys, you know, those two women work. Uh, hell, I, some of them Japanese women, you know, because I, I wrestled over in Japan. I, a lot, actually, a lot of them Japanese women were way ahead of their time. They, You know, 20 years ago, they were where the American women are today. Yes, yes. 
in my opinion. That, that, I think they had to be in Japan because Japan sort of, I, like, you know, I, I say, I don't say, like, kayfabe's deb. I say we're in on the joke now, you know? Yeah, yeah. And in no disrespect, but like we understand, I think now people understand what's going on. We don't know what's going on, but we understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, which I mean, um, it's it, it's not good for the business either. And, that, and no, that, you know, once the internet came along and stuff, it, it wasn't good for the business at all because there's no mystique about the business anymore. And it's you know, and you know, no disrespect to you guys either, but you know, you got a million wrestling podcasts on yeah. TV you know, or on the internet now, and uh, it just. uh you know, it, it'll never be like it used to be back in the day when I grew up as a right. kid. I do my best. Do we do our best to like what little bit of tiny bit of speck of knowledge that I have to not ever let it out. And yeah. I have about this much on a horse's ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know um, what? Sometimes it's better, even if you know something, to, to the, just not say too yeah. much. The problem is the there's a lot of podcasts and news sites out there that think they know everything. Well, he, he, well, you know how it is. No, nobody ever is going to admit they're wrong. They always want right. to be right, you know. Unless, unless you've been in there and trained for what you guys do, you don't know. Yeah, nah. there's all there's all those podcasts and websites that just uh, do nothing but break it down, and they give up the kayfabe easily. Yeah, right. and but it's yeah, it, but to me, when you get someone. I think Roman Reigns is pretty good at it. That just like you don't hear about Roman Reigns ever being out of character. Yeah. When he's a when he was a good guy, when he was the hero, you you heard about him signing autographs everywhere. You heard about him interacting with fans and doing all this stuff. Now that he's the head of the table and he's sort of like that, he's the bad guy, he's the villain. Yeah. You don't hear about that anymore. And yeah. I think that's what it needs to be in. There's ways to use the internet and not to use the internet. Yeah. I but, well, unfortunately, you know, all up. these guys, like you got like, uh, who was it up there? Uh, oh, uh, Alexa Bliss. You know, she's playing this character on TV and then she's on her Instagram, yes. a, a totally different character. So shit like that just flies wrong with me all, all over the place. And like, you know, you're so supposed great. to be with Bray Wyatt and you're supposed to be this fucking demonic chick. And then you're on there laughing and crying because your fucking pig died, you know, and and you're a totally different character. And to me, that WWE's got to got to fucking cringe when they see shit like that. I remember back like when the internet was young. You guys were doing your thing, and like there was the news groups on the internet. I don't know if you were ever familiar. But usually with the those were always group. after the show, right? But once in a while, you would get like, oh, they ship Shawn Michaels' music to the show. Because back then, everything wasn't digital. It was on tape. Yeah, I got you. So, like, you would find out, like, Shawn Michaels was going to be on the show. And that was, like, breaking news. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. yeah, but you know what made that good was you really wasn't sure. You just right. heard something. It could happen or it might not. You know what I mean? It could have been by the KFAB, too. Yeah. Yep. So. And that's why we don't – we've never done news, like – We'll talk about things and we'll, we'll, but it's, we're not a news site. We don't try to be, we're not insiders. No, no. I, I mean, hell, I, I, I mean, sometimes I know what's going on with some stuff and I don't even like talking about shit like it. No, yeah, we'll discuss a rumor, but then right. we, if we know the truth or we won't give it. So we yeah. need to feed the rumor a little bit and keep trying to keep the kayfabe alive. Yeah. I do you, you, um, now do you do indie bookings at all? I do. I still do any bookings. I, I'll get booked here and there doing some stuff. Uh, you know, I, I just uh, did a couple autograph signings and uh, did one for Teddy Long not too long ago. Yeah, you were saying uh, that. Yeah, just, you know, whenever – and you know what sucks about it is, you know, I hadn't been on – the last TV I've done was like the Lucha Libre USA I did on MTV yes. 2 and 3. Uh, that was back in, shoot, I don't know, 2011, maybe 12 was the last time I was on TV. Uh, so, you know, it's – but I don't want to do these things for nothing. And if I'm going to take right. some bumps and stuff, I'm 50 years old. I need paid for it because, yes. yeah. you know, I, I can't be, uh, you know, hung up for a week what? with a damn broken leg, you know, not be able to walk or, you know, any, any even a little injury, man. Cause I've, I've had a lot of injuries over my career and, you know, I got six plates in my face and I almost got wow. killed in Finland. So it's kind of hard. I don't, I don't really want to get punched in the face anymore. But you yeah. must see it from doing like the, uh, the signings and that type of thing that the fans still know who Kui we is. Oh yeah, you, you'd be surprised. There, there's, you yeah. know, there's people. I, 
I still meet people all the time, you know, with, uh, I didn't have my Facebook open for a long time, but I reopened it because, uh, I, I, Facebook to me is, I, I like Instagram. Facebook is just, sometimes it's just too much drama on this Facebook, but I reopened it because of my podcast and, you know, try to promote it and stuff. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of, I get a lot of DMs, people asking for autographs and stuff, which is, which is overwhelming, man. You know, I hadn't done anything with the Kiwi character in WCW since it went under. And, uh, it, it's, it, it, you know, it's, uh, it's awesome to, to see that, you know, people are still wanting to buy a picture of me or, you know, I met a guy yeah. in, down here in where I live. He's a school teacher at a local school. And he uh, asked me about, you know, signing some autographs for some pictures he bought off the internet. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, I looked at his profile and I said, you live in Paulding County, Georgia. That's where I live. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you meet me at the Waffle House on Ridge road? And, you know, I'll, I'll <laughs> sign some pictures for you. He was like, you serious? I said, yeah. I said, I'll tell you what, you buy me lunch and I'll meet you outside as many pictures as you want. So we met at the Waffle House and he bought me lunch and, you know, we we sat there for an hour or two and bullshitted and, you know, shit like that. I love doing stuff like that for, you know, for people that, that, cool. I, that I can get and back, that, you know what I mean? And that's something so simple. Like it probably cost the guy 10 bucks for a Waffle House lunch and you just made his day. Yeah, you know, you, made, mean, it's you awesome. probably made his year and he got to meet somebody that he looked up to. Oh, now, yeah, but, you know, he made my day too, man, because, you know, so, you know, I take that stuff serious. And, you know, if people really want to meet me, man, that's overwhelming to me. It's it's amazing that, you know, that made that big of an impact on people that, you know, somebody still, you know, is interested in meeting me. You know, it, it, it it's baffling to me. That's – now, we had uh, – now, did you do, like, when you were doing the Lucha Libre, was that with – was Vampiro a part of that then? You know what? Vampiro wasn't. Uh, I got that gig from Mark Gendrat. Uh, okay. He moved to uh, Mexico, and, and Gendrak was a huge superstar down in Mexico there for several years. Uh, he was Marco Corleone. Okay, yes, that's and right. He wrestled. He had all the belts, CMML or CMLL. He had, you know, he he was a man down there. Yeah. And from what I understand, he was bigger than Vamp- Vampiro at one point. Is that right? Yeah, Vampiro. Like we became friends with Vamp- Vampiro. We kind of dropped off a little bit um, through doing this um, about a year ago. And the last I heard, he was moving back down to Mexico. So, oh, is he, you know what? I'd love to get Vampire on the podcast. He was always a cool dude, man. I always got along with him. I'll reach out to him. Like I said, he kind of dropped off to us, but I'll definitely reach out to him. He and he had, you know, nothing but good memories of WCW. So, yeah, yeah, he was a great dude, man. I always, you know, he, he was always cool. That's now doing what was the difference between japan and mexico because both of those take when the u.s wasn't taking wrestling serious both yeah. of those countries still really did well you know mexico was more of a a clusterfuck really i mean you got you know every match is like a six eight man tag and there's just yeah. guys every fucking where uh where and it was a little stiff down there depending on who you're working but uh you know when uh japan it's 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 serious. When I was over there, it was serious. I wrestled with uh, Kojima, Kawada, the great Muda. Now these guys, yeah. you know, they're they're icons. Like you, yeah. you wrestle these guys, you better have your fucking head on a swivel, and you better know what you're doing. Because uh, with the language barrier and you know, and, and the seriousness right. is uh, like wrestling a guy like Kawada. If you fuck shit up, man, he will beat your ass for real. And nice. uh, and there there's a few guys like that down there, but I love it. I, I got nothing but respect for those guys. And after I left working with all Japan pro wrestling with mood and them guys, they had nothing but respect for me because I treated those guys good. Uh, you know, I worked with them. They worked with me and uh, I have nothing but good things to say about all Japan pro wrestlers when I was down there. Now you here's know? my sort of mark question. Do you have a jacket? I got a Rivera jacket. Yeah, it's blue. <laughs> that that jacket is so like for something that's not wrestling related. That's such an iconic wrestling. Oh, dude, thing. I could probably sell that jacket for about two thousand dollars. That's. I well, I got watch- a cool story about that jacket though. If you want to hear it, yeah. Absolutely. So I was over there on tour with Umaga, which was eighty five two. Yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, I don't even remember what he wrestled as over there. Maybe just eighty five two. Uh, so him and I tagged quite a bit over there. And me and him actually got in the finals of the tag team tournament with uh, Kawada and uh, – or was it Te- uh, Kea? I think maybe him. It's been so long, I can't remember. But uh, So we go to Rivera after one of the shows. And, you know, Eddie fought too. He's a big son of a bitch. And uh, I'm I'm like 220, and he's like three of me. Right. And uh, not, not really, but he's a big guy. Yeah. So, you know, I'm thinking he can eat. So, you know, I challenge him. He's like, you want to try to see who can eat the most? I said, fuck yeah, because I can eat. 
So uh, we go in there, we order a big steak. I think they were like 24 ounce steaks. Uh, you get a bowl of rice, a salad. So we ate the steak, the bowl of rice and the salad. And, and I actually finished mine for him. And I said, you ready to get another one? He goes, damn, you're done already. So we got another one. So I ate another 24 ounce steak, a bowl of rice and a salad. And then uh, we get done eating and he wasn't done yet. And I said, I'm gonna get another one. He's like, holy shit, dude. He's like, I'm fucking done. I can't eat no more. And I said, you big pussy. So I ordered another one and tiger, which was uh, one of the office guys over there. And he was kind of like the, uh, for the guy gene, like kind of the liaison. And he comes over and he comes and he's like, ah, they called me the Funkster. I wrestled as a Funkster over there. And he's like, Funkster, office say you way too expensive. No more. So, but I ordered one more and I said, I got one more coming. And he's like, after that, no more. You too expensive, Funkster. So, and then I, then I realized I caught wind of how much the bill was. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, I'm a little expensive. <laughs> yeah, I, like talking to different people that have been over there and food is always an issue. Like, Oh, um, dude, especially steak. You get meat over there, it's ridiculous. Well, that's Ivar um, in the WWE. Before he was Ivar, he was Warbeard Hansen in New yeah. Japan and Ring of Honor. And he was telling me one time that, like, he couldn't read the menus, but it lists the protein on the menu. So he would yeah, just yeah. point to the piece that had the most protein on it. <laughs> right? Well, you know, I was going over there quite a bit, and I, I became friends with Kaya, and he was a Hawaiian guy that, you know, he went through the dojo at All Japan, and he was like one of the top gaijin. Well, I mean, he was the top gaijin. He was basically one of the boys over there in Japan. But uh, so he kind of taught me a little bit of uh, Japanese and enough to order food and stuff, you know. And uh, so, but I can tell you this, you'd get like a little hamburger. It was almost like a, to me, it looked like a six, eight ounce hamburger patty. And it was $99 for this thing anywhere you went so could you imagine i went we went to a, a korean barbecue one night that uh one of the accused owned after the shows and they said everything's on them don't worry about nothing so of course me i used to go over there with a suitcase full of tuna fish cans of tuna fish protein bars right. and protein powder and that's all i ate because i did I, when i was on the road i tried to save money and i tried to make money instead of spending it all right so uh you know and then when they tell me they're paying for dinner shit game on i'm fucking eating everything <laughs> So I remember I I kept ordering plates of steak and chicken, mostly steak, because I'm a big uh, red meat kind of guy. So uh, I'm eating all the steak. I remember they. I I looked at my bill. that They brought the bill to the table before the Yakuza said they were going to pay for it. My bill alone was over $700. And I wasn't even done eating yet. So I was like, holy shit, thank God I'm not fucking paying. (laughs) So, But that's kind of the the price of the food over there is crazy. Yeah, and now I think there's like host families that cover the cost, but obviously there's <laughs> gonna be there's gonna be a point where Funkster, you're too expensive. Yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> yeah, no. I heard I heard that a lot. <laughs> That's it's like the, when I was over in Japan when I was in the Philippines. One thing they told us was, "Don't eat American over here. <laughs> you, eat, you you go out to eat, you eat what they have. You eat what yeah. the locals eat. Otherwise, you're gonna be paying your whole check." Yeah, no shit, right? Well, you know, I, I'm not a big fish guy or sushi guy, but I tell you what, I, the sushi over there is pretty damn good. It doesn't is. taste like fish. I'm not a fan at all, but it didn't taste like fish to me at all. No, nah, yeah, really, really it, it's so clean and they're real thick pieces. I remember we used, and you know, a lot of times they'd order for you. And if you don't eat what they order, it's yeah. real disrespectful over there. So you better eat it. Yeah, I know. Um, I know one wrestler who went over to Japan and never didn't drink at all before he went over there. If he went to the oh, bar, shit. he drank Sprite. They yeah. ordered him a beer, so now he, he he's a drinker. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Dude, and that's I what they used say. to tell us. They don't give a shit. If they want to take you out and get drunk, they don't care if you can wrestle yeah. the next night. They and want you to – They you know, your, uh, your worth is what you can do at the bar and, and not always in the wrestling ring. Right, and that's what he said. He said, uh, they put a beer in front of me. I had to drink a beer. So yeah, It's almost like there's two personas with the wrestler. You have to have your in-ring persona, and then you're outside the ring persona, no. and they both kind yeah. of have to be same but different. Yeah. And The other, we, we had on one of uh, Booker T students, Rex Andrews, and he had just okay. gone over there for Sonny Ono. Okay. And um, he stayed in the dojo, and I was like, what did you eat there? How did you order your food? And he said, well, the dojo had people in the kitchen, and they were constantly making this thing called, I think he called it Chonko. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. Like they, you eat whatever they make. 
it was like cabbage stew, so he could go down there at two a.m. and get fresh cabbage stew. So that was what he ate the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So, some of that chunko, I don't know if I'd want to eat it though. It depends on what, yeah, what it dojo sound, you're in. It did not sound too appetizing to me. No, I, I know it uh, at the All Japan Dojo. I don't know whether they're doing ribs on guys, but they had shit in that you wouldn't want to eat. <laughs> That's but you know, we used to incredible. get on the tour bus and drive to these. Uh, you know, we drove all over Japan while I was over there in the tour bus. And then we watch old, like, uh, I remember we always watched Bruce Lee movies or we watched old, like, uh, uh, all Japan wrestling tapes with, with Hanson and Masala and all these guys. And, uh, we'd always stop at these like road stops and you'd get like, they'd have these meat on a stick, but nobody ever knew what the hell kind of meat it was. And so right. remember Jerry Toot, the wall that was with, uh, Alex, right? Yeah. So, so yes. Yeah. So me and him were like best friends back in the day. So, you know, when we were going to Japan, you know, we'd always stop at these road stops and we'd, we'd we'll get these meat on a stick and we're all like, you know, it's so damn good, but we don't know what the hell we're eating. So who knows what the hell we ate over there. That's, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Bobby D. He just sent me a message that he's been listening since 705. But it won't Bobby D, what's for up? Some reason. Bobby's, uh, Bobby is an old, old... Uh, Old school wrestling fan around here. It's actually Laurie's his wife, but Bobby oh, okay. does. Bobby helps set up shows, and he's um he's no spring chicken. Yeah, he's I don't know what his age is. I'm not you know I'm not the type to ask, but he does more than some of these kids that are breaking in <laughs> as far as setting the rings up. So well, that's cool, Bobby. We appreciate you setting the rings up for us, man. You're a hell of a guy. He really is. Um, now. What did you know? How did you break in? Did you get when you guys broke in? You guys had to sort of do that and pay the dues, right? Uh, yeah, but you know, I, I actually broke in in Ohio at a I met this guy, uh, and he was a volunteer fireman. And he, he was, uh, I saw his picture in the local paper about being a wrestler and this and that. And he said he had a wrestling ring at a, at a, at a old school. It was, it was, uh, like a the fire department bought this old school that was, you know, not, they were no longer using and he set up a ring in this uh like elementary school so uh i i actually contacted this guy you know this was before facebook and instagram and no, nobody right. had cell phones so i figured out how to get a hold of this guy i got a hold. i got a somehow somebody knew where his mom and dad lived or whatever and they knew their name so i got his mom and dad's phone number and i called him and it just so happened he had a, like a house downstairs in, in their basement so, you know, I got in contact with through that. And then, you know, he agreed to meet me. And uh, when he saw me, he was like, yeah, he goes, you you definitely look like you could be a pro wrestler. And uh, he, he agreed to help, you know, let me use his ring. And I had a buddy of mine that was training with a guy named Kid Collins in Galleon, Ohio, which was a Saturday morning job guy, they called him, on, on the WWE or WWF back in the day. Right. Uh, so he was training with those guys. And I didn't want to pay $2,000 and drive damn – you know, two hours to guy in Ohio every Sunday or whatever, you know what I mean? And, uh, cause I, ne I never had a lot of money back in the day. So, you know, I had to be careful what I spent and I didn't really have $2,000 to go, you know, driving two hours every Sunday to try to train. So, uh, so I started training in the school and the guy that used to go down there with kid Collins, it was trained by him would come up to the school. Him and I were tag team partners. He's still wrestling his day. He went by the rogue in all the independents up in Ohio and like around Pennsylvania and stuff. Uh, Greg Anderson's his name. I, his brother was my best friend. So we started training in the schoolhouse. He trained me. And uh, then we started doing independent shows. And uh, that's how I got my break. But when I did the power plant tryout, I never told him I knew anything about wrestling. I told him I was never in a wrestling ring because I didn't want to get treated different. Right. Which at the time, if I would have known at the time, it probably would have helped me out to tell him. But like I said, I didn't want to get treated any different than the rest of the guys. I wanted to pay my dues, and I wanted to go through what everybody else was going through without any special treatment. That, I think that – so I think what you did was the right way, and I think for a different reason as well, because if you had said, oh, yeah, I've been doing the independence for, you know, X amount of years, you might have been put on a different pedestal. Yeah, I, I think so. You, you know, know I, I actually stood out a little bit. But, I mean, you could tell I probably had a little bit of ring training, but – you know, some guys just naturally pick it up and which right. I do. So, you know, it was, it was easy for me to convince them that, you know, I was just a quick learner. It Did probably also would have turned into, Hey, we need a volunteer. Fuck. Come up. Every time. Well, that was like that anyway. Me. So it didn't matter. <laughs> Cause Did I was one of Sarge's boys, you know, 
Did you have to unlearn anything that you will, that you had learned? Uh, not really, because to be honest with you, I I really wasn't didn't really learn a lot. I just kind of just did stuff okay. I saw on TV. To be honest with you, and you, you just literally just picked it up pretty quick then. Yeah, yeah. Because I, a lot I, of people like this, you know, this bad habits and these little things. Yeah, no, I and I'm real teachable. I like listening to people tell me, not tell me what to do, but I like if someone knows better than me, I'm going to listen. I'm not one of these guys. Oh, I know everything. I know everything. I'll just do what I want to do. I, I actually, you know, you, and you can ask Sarge. I'm, I'm, I'm easy to teach because I listen. Up here, there's up in like we're literally we're I'm two minutes outside of Boston. Like I, we both grew up in Boston. There, I can think of six or seven schools off the top of my head, but like three or four that are reputable where you're going to get that real, yeah, education out of. And unfortunately, the other, not unfortunately. Because there's a place for it, but those other schools still get the business where, you know, you go a mile down the road and you're just going to learn a little more. Yeah, yeah, I got you. But they played to the people that, you know, the good now, You guys know R.J. Brewer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a good yeah, buddy of mine. I actually had him on my podcast, too. I, he worked in Lucha Libre USA with us. So, John wouldn't know my name if you said it. But oh, here's really? a funny John Walter story. And Joe, you were there for this. Yeah, John's a great dude, I, man. I've never taken a bump in my life, Alan. It's not what I do. It's not what I intend to do. Yeah. But I, we, me and Joe were both doing security of the show. And RJ, he was then known as John Walters here, Hurricane John Walters. Yeah. Was cutting a promo in the ring. There was another wrestler, Alan Blade, who they were working a program together. I also sold tickets. I was also the guy at the door that sold the tickets. And I was also security. So my buddy George said, oh, there's a spot here. We need security. Boom. I said, all right, cool. I'll keep an eye on it. And George had warned everyone else that the ceiling had been leaking at the armory we were in. Joe, do you know where I'm going yet? I think so. So <laughs> high cam is on one side of the ring where we run in is on the other side. I hit the wet spot on the floor. You saw my feet over the ring when my back was <laughs> on the ground. Now JP's pushing six, what six eight? Yeah, well, so it's not a good position for your guy your we, size. I get up. My buddy's like literally hiding behind me, going, "I can't believe you just fell." I'm like, "I can't believe you didn't tell me the wet spot was there." And we get in the, we're ushering the other <laughs> kid into the back, and we get out there, and the other kid says, "All right, you guys ready to do this again?" I said, "You just want to see me fall again, huh?" As he <laughs> hell, runs hell through yeah. the curtain. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, John, just, man, he's a good dude. I've known him since that Lucha Libre USA, and yeah. I've been friends with him ever since. Such an incredible, incredible wrestler, too. Oh, dude, that dude's amazing. And when he did that, when he um, when he took on that that Brewer press owner, and he was doing those promos at the oh, border, dude, they were he he was he was so over it was ridiculous. <sighs> that was he. Oh yeah. That was for those who don't know. R.J. Brewer is the son of the then governor of Arizona, who was. Uh, I believe Jane Brewer was her name. Like? Yeah, I forget if she was trying to open the borders or close the borders completely. Um, oh yeah, she Arizona. was big on that. Uh, I can't remember the bill back then. It was like yeah. a shoot. I, he used to have it on the this, back of his tights. This was way before the wall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was his thing: is he was cutting promos down on the border. Like he was living in Arizona at the time, I think, legitimately. Uh no, no, he wasn't. But no, okay. <laughs> I know he was. I know he was out of Boston at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so he was cutting these promos with having having Mexicans run over the border, and it, it, they were they were one funny, but two they it just generated so much heat. Oh, dude, he he was on a lot of national television with that gimmick. Yes, yeah. He got booked on all kinds of stuff. That like that, I believe he made like nationwide news at one. Point. Oh yeah, he. I I know he did a couple of news shows, a couple of uh, like so, you're like holy shit, he did that show. And, and, yeah, and so that and for you know what what the Lucha Libre program was at that point, that wasn't a giant program. It was on MTV, but it wasn't like. But that that had so Monday much Night potential, Raw. man. They dropped the ball. Oh, with yeah, thing. there was so much talent there. But like for him to get on national news for that, that says something on what he was doing, you know. Oh, dude, he he's amazing. Yeah, he's a. Nobody yeah. ever said he wasn't a good worker. That's for sure. 
Yeah, no, 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 no. That's... That dude couldn't have a bad match if he tried to have a bad match. <laughs> <laughs> but then, that, and that's where he came up. Like he was a, he was a product of a great school. Like he was, uh, he was a Walter he Kowalski, Kowalski student. Yeah. yeah. So, and I believe he was actually while Kowalski was still active in the training. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I think he was when um, he first started. Yeah. So. That, and hey, hey listen, something. guys. I I, I got to start my podcast in five minutes. All so, right. Uh, I hate to cut you off, but yes, uh, no. If you guys ever want to have me back on, just holler at me, man. We'll work it out. Absolutely, Absolutely. Alan. Thank great. you. This was a blast. That went by really fast. I and, and just uh, can can you just remind everybody to watch the Get Funk podcast? It's on anywhere you get your major podcasts on Spotify, YouTube. Uh, if we go live, we're on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, yep. and uh, you can check it out. Uh, Spotify, Apple iTunes, all that kind of stuff. And you're Alan Funk Five on Twitter, correct? Yeah, Alan Funk Five on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. It's Funk Allen. There you go. Thank you, Alan. Sure. I appreciate it, man. This was a blast. Hey guys, thanks so much. Thank like you. I said, you, you ever want me to come back on? Just tell me. I mean, work it out, man. All Figure right. Anytime. Better internet. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm reasonable. I'm telling you, it's a stream yard, man. Yeah, but. But Thank you, go. Alan. We got all you right, guys. All you. Have a great hey, look show. At this. I'm leaving now. He's getting better. <laughs> have a great show, Alan. Hey, I appreciate it. you guys. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, later, guys. That was cool. That was what a guy, man. Yeah, good guy. Open been book to everything. Yeah, and uh, yeah. <laughs> do you remember that John Walters thing? I do. Now that you say it, I was sitting there. I was like. The, I was like, someone fell. Someone fell. I don't. <laughs> oh shit! Yes, ass over tea kettle. You feet were in the air. Yes. Everyone thought it was a work too. No, that was that was just me falling on my ass. Yeah, maybe that's why you. You know who's in the chat? You know who? You know who commented today? What? Look at this one. Look at this. That commented today. David Do you know who that is? I don't remember. I'll give you a hint. He's from the motherland. Okay. It's Woody. Oh, crap. I haven't <laughs> talked to or heard from him in a while. That's, he posted a few comments. He said, the boys are back in town. Hi. And then Pistol Pez was when uh, he, Quee Wee Allen was running through some of the things. Yeah. That was a that was so fun. We yeah, I, I wish somebody had a better connection. I had things to say, but I was honestly, I was so great that it, w- it would just be lost no you're you look blurry now it looks like you're on like uh um nothing's changing a grainy camera but yeah, you sound well, no laptop camera hopefully i'll get a better setup someday you but uh, one of the things good. i wanted to say to him about uh the food in japan you depending on how you put your silverware down when you're done if you use silverware or even the chopsticks, depending on how you put them down, is either a compliment to the chef or an insult. Really? Yes. Like, you know, around here, you're done eating, you put your, your, your fork on the plate, put your knife on the plate, like... If it's nice, and I'm them. at a restaurant, if it's nice, I put it in my pocket. Yeah, that's true, too. Well, you put the plate in your pocket, right in. But, you know, yeah. depending on how... If you have, like, some food left over, and you stab the fork in it and leave it there, that's an insult. Really? Yes. Huh. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> you learned a lot of things the hard way. Yeah. In Japan well, the waiter comes up. He's like, "You know, like I'm like, well, well, no, it was great." He's like, "But you, but you put." I'm like, and then one of the guys that's been to Japan a few times told me, "I was like, oh, sorry." <laughs> yeah, Didn't tell yeah. you. Yeah, I, I think we might have to have him on again soon. Yeah, Maybe soon, too soon, but you know, well, soon. We got things like I'm off, guys. I'm in Daytona next week, so. I don't think there's going to be a show. I don't know. It depends. If if I can get a hold of the the guest and, and push it back a week, we'll, because I'll be tied up with doing some Veterans Day stuff. Uh, so I might not be able to make it back in time. So I want to make sure that I oh, let him you. know so he's not logging in with nothing. Thank you for but, your service now in case I don't talk to you every day between now and then. It's on film now, so you can just keep replaying that. Right. Um, but, uh, so if we can, if we can put, if I can push back the shocker, if you guys look him up, the Shocker Magic. He's a magic wrestler. You might have seen him on Penn Teller's Fool Us. Uh, he was on there with a friend of the show, the uh, original Sin. He was his, his worker. Um, but if we can push him back a week, we will. If not, it's just going to be me and him next week. 
Yeah, and um, after that, like I'm working. Uh, I just talked to Alec Price today. He wants to come back on the prize, the prize city OG Alec Price, who also has some. Uh, you're gonna, I'm gonna have you talk to him because you're gonna definitely know his family, like his mother's maiden name. All right. It's a low. He's he's got uh, Celtic ties, but he's from East Boston now. Okay. Um, and he's a. Uh, I, I hate saying he's an up and comer because like he's doing so much on the indies at this and the independence at this point with Limitless and Beyond. Is this um, the kid that broke in with NECW back in the day? No, no. Oh, okay. No, there Alex one, Young. There, there was one that I remember we talked to before had ties to something with the person that we grew up with. Alec is uh very Alec is maybe twenty. Okay. Um, uh, this guy would probably be pushing twenty five now. 30 even. Yeah, but uh, definitely get him on. Yeah. Get him on know, after the shocker. He does a lot just everywhere. And um, he's got an interesting character. It really is him. I'll tell you, like, I've had conversations with him. Um, and he's very much him. It's a uh, young kid sort of uh, into all the trends, the... Real quick though, I just noticed on the scroll going across the bottom uh, that you put down the host of the Get Funk podcast, Alan Funk, aka Creewe. Yeah, I spelled it wrong. It's Creewe. <laughs> he didn't yeah, but, notice. Nah, I just noticed it now, and I'll later. But yeah, we'll definitely get him on soon. And we're working on anybody. And like we said before, guys, if there's somebody you want us to get on or somebody you want us to reach out, hit us up on Twitter, hit us up on Facebook, and Facebook, to Instagram, one of those places. We're pretty much everywhere, whether it's the show, whether it's JP or myself. Hit us, hit us up. up anyway. And also, yeah. guys, um, that's um, th- there was something that happened in wrestling this week that I think Joe – you're going to want to touch on and I want to touch on real quick. And that's um, people look at addiction and they think drugs automatically, heavy drugs. Yes. Um, it's not only drugs, guys. Alcohol addiction it can be very serious. It can end families. It can end lives. It's a lot easier to be addicted to alcohol than it is to harder drugs. Because alcohol is easily acceptable. It's in every household. It's easy to get. I mean, I started drinking at 13 years old. Now, yeah. I quit shortly after I was 21. I've been sober now for over 26 years. Yeah. It's been the toughest battle of my life. And, like, you look at things like um, the the Las Vegas Raiders, their wide receiver just got into a car accident while he was drinking, going to 154 miles per hour. Um, and he killed somebody. Somebody died in that accident. So I believe it, it's a very serious thing. And we just wish John Moxley the best. And guys, I saw some people online saying this would never happen in WWE because WWE wouldn't allow it. Guys, how many times have the Usos been arrested for DUI? And no offense to them, they need help as well. Or even look back to the old days. How many times has. I'm, I'm going to put put the put the kudos on Vince. How many times has Vince sent somebody to rehab? Well, anybody that anyone like I'm Vince may be paying for Moxley's rehab. I know he reached out. I hear, hear um, he reached out. Vince has a thing. Uh, Vince had a, a policy a couple of years ago where he would put guys through rehab if you ever worked for him and. Um, I remember WrestleMania 25, I was sitting with Kevin Nash. I asked about Scott Hall. Scott Hall was having some issues at that point, And he said, he's doing good right now. He's on that. He's on a Vince scholarship. I think he called it saying that he was going through the rehab at that point paid for by Vince. So, and yeah, at that point the there, at that, one. at that point there, that was not like a public thing that Vince was doing that. Yeah. And I said, oh, that's awesome. He said, oh, no. He said, Vince does that. That's a thing. Like, And then it became, he made it an actual policy that the shareholders knew about a couple of years later. Yeah. So well, so the, so the the company will pay for it, not out of his pocket. Probably, I'm not, yes. I'm not downplaying that. I'm not downplaying that. But 
it's still cool that he does it for and, and it's whether you worked for one show for him or you know you didn't have to be under contract basically you had to be an employee at some point so if you traveled with him for a little bit then yeah. he would pay for it which but john moxley man with fans get the help you need get better um your family will be there for you your fans will be there for you and your friends will all be there for you when you come out and i want, I want to put this out to anybody listening to us uh and i think i've said this before i've been sober for 26 years i can help you point you in the right direction i can't cure you but right. i can listen to you i can put you in the right direction i can help guide you and most of all i can be an ear and a person of support no judgment i've done it myself i woke up naked yeah. in the gutters of thailand okay neither I've neither one of us so if you want to reach out to one of us and again we're not therapists we cannot help you we can listen and we can get you the help uh, put you in the put you in the right place to get the help you Absolutely. know we'll google whatever we need to do for you reach out to us Yes, that's all I can say. So, I think that was. I think we just had a pretty good episode, Joe. I think we did. I just want before I say my, my normal sign off. Anybody listening to us here, go jump onto the Get Funk podcast. Yes, go get funked. Yep, it's gonna funk you up. <laughs> up town, funk you up. All right, don't do that. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, <laughs> So again, uh, there may and there may not be a show next week, depending on if I if I can push uh, the shocker back one week. If not, uh, then see you next Thursday. <laughs>